of how the universe began. Um, it's looking good, but it is uh, always open to revision. Any scientific result is always, could always be changed, revised. And during my lifetime, our picture of the origin of the universe has got modified quite a bit. But this is our current best, stand, best understanding. And I think, to me, it looks quite good. So we believe our whole universe had a beginning about 14 billion years ago. And it started with a big bang. It seems that immediately before the Big Bang, everything was in a tiny, tiny volume. And it didn't like being in a tiny, tiny volume, so it went whoosh. So the Big Bang is really a very rapid expansion. It was given the name Big, Big Bang as a sort of nickname. And the name has stuck. And you'll see it now in textbooks with capital B's for Big and Bang. So everything was just before the Big Bang in a tiny, tiny volume. That means all of space, all of matter, all of energy was in this tiny, tiny volume. And what the scientist calls time began with the Big Bang. Your head's probably beginning to hurt. This is quite difficult stuff well, virtually impossible stuff to get your head around. But I'll try and make it as clear as I can. Uh, let's start with time. Time started, or what the scientist calls time, started with the Big Bang. This is a speaker's godsend, because I'm sure some of you will have questions. What was there before the Big Bang? The scientist can't answer that question because what the scientist means by time started with the Big Bang. And you're asking, what was there before time began? It's a bit like asking, what's north of the North Pole? It's a question based on a wrong sort of picture. So as a scientist, I can't tell you what there was before the Big Bang. There might be other ways you could address the question. Theology, art, music, stamp design, whatever you like. But there isn't a scientific answer to that question. And then all of space was in this tiny, tiny <coughs> volume. It's springtime. There are leaf buds that are busy bursting open. Just before a leaf bud bursts, you have crinkled up inside the bud the small leaf and its potential for growth. And then when the bud bursts, the leaf unfurls and grows. It's a bit like that with space. Everything, all of space, was crinkled up inside this tiny, tiny bud that was the early universe, smaller than a grain of sand. And with the Big Bang, space opened out and growed and is still growing is still expanding, even today. Because, and this is really a head-hurting bit, because all of space was in that tiny, tiny volume, the explosion was everywhere in all of space. There's no single centre for the explosion. So although we, in our galaxy, the Milky Way, can look out and see other galaxies moving away from us. And if you don't think too hard, you say, ha ha, we're the center of the universe. But if we lived in another galaxy, somewhere over here, and looked out, we'd see all the galaxies moving away from us. And we'd say, ha ha, we're the center of the universe. No matter which galaxy you live in, you see everything moving away from you. There is no one center. Everywhere is a centre, if you must have a centre. Right, final bit on this slide, matter energy. Have you heard of Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared? Some of you have, right. That's talking about energy E and matter m. 
and it's telling us that you can change energy into matter, into mass, or vice versa, mass into energy. It's a bit like changing money when you go abroad, pounds into euros, euros into pounds, only there's no bank to take a cut. So, although you may have been taught about the conservation of matter, as you get into more advanced physics, you have to talk about the conservation of energy hyphen matter because matter alone is not conserved. Sometimes it can change over into energy or energy can change into matter. So in this tiny, tiny bowl that there was before the explosion, just before the Big Bang, there was all of energy hyphen matter or energy and matter. Right, that's the worst of the head-hurting stuff. <laughs>